All right, I'm going to call the ECAC committee to order at 5.05 p.m. It is Monday, June 27, 2022. And I want to acknowledge that, um, hello. I want to acknowledge that uh, we're hosting this meeting on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Klippam, and KT uh, nations. And that uh, recognizing this is a virtual meeting, I also want to encourage everyone to take an opportunity to recognize and learn uh, from the nations for which you are situated on right now. And if you aren't aware of what lands you are currently situated on, there is a wonderful resource out there that you can access. Um, nativelands.ca, I believe, is the Native website. Dash land. Native dash land at uh, dot .ca. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, where you can actually look up uh, what nations um, you are currently situated on uh, where you are right now. So I highly encourage everyone to access that resource if they, if they need. And with that, I just want to welcome everyone to the meeting. We are holding a hybrid meeting today. So some of us are here in person in the Student Union Building. Some of us are accessing this meeting by Zoom. If at any point there's any trouble either um, on our end here in person or on your end in the virtual realm, please don't hesitate to interrupt and uh, to signal any issue there might be. I also want to take a moment to welcome one of our members at large who is here for the first time, Minna Hill. Welcome very much. We're excited to have you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the warm welcome. <laughs> so in our committee meetings, we use something called Robert's Rules of Order, and I try really hard to go slowly. Um, when it comes to Robert's Rules, because Robert's Rules can be intimidating at times, but if it's done properly, it should be more of a team building exercise and a learning opportunity for, for everyone in the space. So I'll try my hardest to explain everything as I am going through it as the, as the chair of the meeting. Uh, but again, if at any point you have any questions, just unmute yourself and say, hey, I'm confused, and I'll be happy to explain things um, as they come up. But with that, we'll begin with section three of our agenda, the roll call of attendance. I'll call on everyone by their position. And uh, if you could please share your name, your pronouns, and your access needs. And access needs are anything that we can do to make your experience here in this meeting more accessible or, or uh, yeah, more accessible. So that could be anything from uh, letting us know uh, if we need to speak louder, anything from, you know, letting us know your internet connection may be a bit sketchy. It could be literally anything. So uh, anything about your participation in this space. So this is an opportunity for you to share that as well. So name, pronouns, and access needs. I'll start from the top of our list here on our agenda, and everyone should have access to the agenda uh, as circulated. Uh, and if you don't, please let me know. We'll start with the VP External and Community Affairs. Hi everyone, my name is Ishana, my pronouns are she, her, um, and all my access needs are met. Thanks Ishana. Our VP Equity and Sustainability is going to come. She is just in another meeting and will join online when she is done. We'll move on to the English, English counselor, which is myself. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Gabe Leosis. My pronouns are he, him, his, and my access needs are met. Next is the English or uh, history counselor. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Reed. My pronouns are he and his, and all my access needs are met. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Indigenous studies counselor. Hi, uh, my name is Anita Shen. Uh, my pronouns are they and them, and all my access needs are met. Thanks very much. Uh, our at large representative, uh, Minna Hill. Hey, my name is Minaho. My pronouns are she and her, and all my access needs have been met. Thanks so much. And we have another at-large member, Alexandra, who will be joining us about 30 minutes late online. They will be joining us as well. Next, our society staff, and I'll start with our policy research and community affairs coordinator. Hi, everyone. My name is BT. Pronoun she has. My access needs are kind of met. My internet is not that good. 
Thank you. Thanks, Petey. Let us know if at any point you need uh, anything repeated. Next up is the administrative assistant. Hey everyone, this is Simmer. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and all my access needs are met. Thanks, Simmer. I believe that's everyone. So that concludes our roll call of attendance, and we'll move on to section four of our agenda titled Consent Agenda. We have one item under our consent agenda, and that's approving minutes from the meeting of uh, June 14th, 2022. Now, how the consent agenda works is it's usually uh, motions or items that are deemed kind of housekeeping, items that we just kind of do because they're procedure. Um, in this case, it's uh, approving the minutes from the last meeting so that we can then share them on our website for our membership and the undergraduate student body to, to view at their own pleasure. Um, pleasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the consent usually under Robert's rules, motions need a mover and a second. Uh, the consent agenda does not because it's designed to help move the meeting and, and go faster as their items that are typically not controversial. Um, however, if you do wish to vote on one of these motions as if it were an actual motion, all you need to do, all that needs to happen is one member objects to it being under the consent agenda. It gets pulled from the consent agenda and we have to vote on it as if it were a normal motion. And that happens by me, the chair, asking, are there any objections to the items, in this case, the item singular under the consent agenda? So seeing none, we'll consider the consent agenda carried by unanimous consent. We'll move on to section five, which is adopting the rest of our agenda. So this is 5.1. Now, this motion will require a mover and a seconder, and we'll take a vote on it afterwards. So I will read the motion and then ask for a mover and a second. So be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. Uh, now, because we're a hybrid meeting, uh, you can either in person here just raise your hand and I'll call on your name. Um, or uh, if you would like to move our second online, please use the Zoom raise hand feature. And I will also call on you if, um, if, if, if you want to be the mover or the second. So do I have a mover for the motion? Matt moves the motion. Do I have a second? I need a second. So we have a mover and a second, and now we can open the floor for discussion. Uh, in discussion, this is an opportunity for us to, for any member to put forward amendments to the agenda, meaning if there's an item on the agenda that you would like to add that is currently not there, uh, now is your opportunity to express that. So I'll ask, is there anything anyone would like to add to the agenda? I see Rhea, you've joined us. Just we're at the adoption of the agenda uh, phase of the, the meeting. So I just posed the question, are there any amendments to the agenda to be made? I am seeing none. So we will put this motion to a vote. And again, because this is one of our first hybrid meetings, I'll just explain how voting works. Um, I will ask, um, all those in favor, and when I say that, everyone in person will raise their hand. Everyone online will raise their hand using the Zoom raise hand feature. If it's unanimous, then I'll just call it as it is. I'll say, okay, that's carried unanimously. If I can see that there is some contestation on the motion, we'll then do roll call, which means I'll have to call on each one of you individually uh, asking for your vote. I, I would like to add two like announcements at the end. It's pretty casual, but I mean they'll probably take like a minute or two. We don't need to amend it. Yeah, you oh, can yeah, just I'll just worries. yeah, you can just say, hey, I wanted to. I have a couple things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um okay, so we have a motion on we have a motion on the floor, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. All those in favor, please raise your hands. In favor, raise hands. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this in person. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> okay. So that's carried unanimously. Everyone can lower their hands now. Thanks very much. And so that takes us into section seven of our agenda, which is report from committees. And I believe Ishana will have an update on the activities, initiatives, and projects that have been going on in the Office of the VP External and Community Affairs. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today. 
Um, so starting off with reports from what's happening in the office of the VP external, um, something that the VP equity and I actually attended was the labor notes conference in Chicago. We got to meet a uh, a bunch of amazing labor union organizers. We met a lot of student organizers as well. Um, kind of next steps, well, kind of what we learned from there. Like personally, from what I got is I went to a bunch of workshops. Um, one was how to create an anti-racist union. Another one was about learning how to campaign. Um, also, something I was really, really happy to go to was there was a workshop on campus debt. Um, so it was, it was right into my portfolio and I learned a lot about how, um, how to kind of report to the government our issues and kind of showing the stats and how to do that. So it was kind of uh, being like, okay, first of all, they, it was really great because they gave us like a whole Excel sheet. I'll share this with, um, with, with the committee as well. So you can use it in your own reports and things like that. Um, so it's basically just kind of where to find information, um, how to log that information and how to kind of send it to the government or show the government. Um, it was more, it was catered of course to like the United States and they were talking about Wall Street, but, in, <laughs> but in terms of like Excel, um, we can use our own Canadian resources and how like the government works here and how um, tuition works and things like that. Um, yeah, there was a whole lot of stuff. I know that Ria is also working on like a package for council. Um, I am going to, I'm, I want to do the same kind of thing. Um, Ria, do you have anything you want to add about the Labor Union Conference uh, report back? If not, yeah. that's totally fine. <laughs> Yeah, I could quickly jump in. Yeah, it was just an amazing experience. And I know only a few of us were able to go, but just to like bring that back, um, back to the SFSS, another um, workshop that we went to as well was um, uh, like a mobilizing, like turning an issue into a campaign and then also messaging your power, which is like working um, with communications um, and media as well um, and how to really just... Um, uh, like really like um, holds a successful kind of um, a campaign and like how to organize and stuff and work with different groups, especially with the media as well. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the campaigns that we'll also be, we'll also be doing as a committee um, and working with the other groups as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm working on the package and also I can send, um, there's a link um, to the videos. They they recorded some of the sessions uh, at the conference um, if people want to check it out. Um, but yeah, they had like the professional recording as well. But I'll, I'll have that package and like send it to you folks as well. Perfect. Thank you, Ria. Um, yeah, going on, that was just one of the things that we've done. <laughs> Something that we did in the past week as well was we hosted a town hall with Migrant Students United and a bunch of other signatories as well to eliminate the, stu the international student health fee. Um, a little bit of background on that is that the government charges international students a health fee um, when we literally have universal health care within Canada. Um, this fee is charged $75 per month to international students. There's no family plan associated with this fee, so it's, it's, it's a large fee. Um, it's unfair, so we're trying to eliminate that. We're currently, we're going to launch the campaign on... I think today. Um, so we launched the campaign today. Um, there's also a link to the petition that we can probably put in the chat later. Um, Ria, do you have that? Uh, could you, if you have it on your hands, if you could link it. Um, and also, so we had a town hall on that. We met with a bunch of people. We kind of talked about next steps. Kind of what we're talking about right now is to maybe have a day of action, um, working with other student unions, kind of just getting the word out there. Um, and really building student power and numbers and I just just bring you back that that radical student power. Um, go ahead, Ria. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Ria. I'm not the chair. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I just came out of um, the MSU meeting, but um, yeah, we're planning for a rally in September as well at Adrian Dix's office, who's currently the Minister of um, Health, and then he was also the Minister of Education previously, but yeah, if any of you guys are interested in that, um, I know we're, me and Ishana also are uh, organizers with MSU too, but exciting stuff coming up. And I know um, uh, Nebula as well, you were there too, right? For the, um, yeah, super exciting. Yeah, 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 for the MSU, for the town hall, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exciting stuff. 
Yeah, um, kind of going on. I've pretty much finished most of my meetings with the politi with politicians. So I'm creating kind of a presentation for council now, and I'm going to report back on like who our supporters kind of are, like next steps with politicians. Um, I've also met with some city councilors, and we've been talking about municipal elections. Um, I had a really good conversation with a city of Vancouver uh, councilor, and we talked about how we can kind of get the word out and kind of make well, how, what is voting? Like, why should we vote? First of all, what are municipal elections? Um, and that coming from a city council will be super, because because they'll know the process, right? So we're kind of thinking, oh, maybe we can table with the city council, kind of get um, politicians in, in the student union bu building. Um, talking about that, we're thinking of also inviting politicians to our committee meetings. Um, it'll kind of help us get more comfortable talking with politicians, um, because even for myself at first, it was quite nerve wracking because you don't really know what to expect but at the end of the day it's just like having a normal conversation and like saying what needs to be said because and because honesty is is really um relayed is relayed well um when you're talking to government officials and things like that also it's just really good um experience um so yeah basically done all those meetings um, some projects that we're going to be talking about later on, I'll just bring this up now, but um, we're going to be planning for a water drive. I know that we're currently in a heat wave as well, so we're trying to see kind of the effects of this heat wave. And then from then on, we're going to see how we can buy packages of water, if we can get sponsors for water. And then within our committee, um, I'll also be bringing this up to council, but getting volunteers to go to the downtown east side, to go to Surrey Central and give out these um, water bottles and and just being in the community and creating that community of care and love. Um, yeah, something I already kind of touched on before was municipal elections. We'll be talking about this later in more depth. Um, yeah. Oh, also something I wanted to bring up to the committee was that um, I have a lot of meetings with a lot of external groups. Um, I'm going to be sending out a lot of emails and messages on Discord just, just to invite you folks. Um, whichever meetings I go to, I feel like it'd be great if other folks could come. Um, for example, Matt and I met with a, a blood drive organizer, um, and you can kind of see what you have to do. For example, we went through the sub. We had we had to see if the trucks could fit um, for the blood drive, like in our loading area. We kind of have to see, first of all, what days, how would we get people in and out of the building smoothly, especially during the fall when the sub building is way busier than it, it is in the summer. Um, so kind of just, it, you kind of see what kind of goes behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I think that is pretty much it for reports from what's happening here. Any questions for what I'm doing? Any clarification? Also, Ria, I saw you said in the chat, reminding politicians that they are accountable to you. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I can give a little bit of an example to this. Um, currently, we know we just passed, city council passed the endorsement for the gondola. Now we're holding government officials accountable to getting that done. Um, kind of what I've heard right now is that it's in the 10-year plan. And I'm like, I hear that, but I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, does that mean we have to get funding in 10 years? Will be built within 10 years? Uh, what do we have to do as a student union now to get this built um, and make it as accessible as possible for, for everyone? Um, yeah. That's awesome. And I don't know how many people know, but um, in order for projects like the gondola to get funding, it has to, well, as Ishana said, it has to get passed through the um, TransLink's 10-year plan, which gets approved by the Mayor's Council of TransLink, which is basically all the lower mainland mayors that it's like TransLink's decision-making body. They're having their meeting on the 30th. Um, so likely the funding for the gondola will be secured by that meeting, at which point the provincial government is legally required to fund the project. So whatever direction the mayor's council gives, the province must fund. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of exciting. Um, we're almost there. <laughs> the only thing that we are unclear of is the timeline. However, um, because compared to other TransLink projects, like if you if you look at the expansion of the Expo the, uh, Millennium Line to UBC, that's like a couple billion dollars. Um, the gondola is nowhere near that. It's like I think at most a hundred million dollars. Um, 
So I know that, like I'm saying that, like that's nothing, but of course it is still a lot of money. Um, just in comparison to other infrastructure projects, it, I, I believe personally, I think just kind of in my understanding of government that the project can move in a bit of a more expeditious fashion than, you know, SkyTrain projects take, which take like <laughs> decades, yeah. uh, which is fantastic. Anyway, any questions from committee members on the report from Ashana? Exciting. Well, thank you for your report. Uh, that concludes reports from committees. We'll move into item 10 of our agenda, and that's new, new business. Uh, we have one motion, and typically new business uh, how the the new business section how it houses all of our motions which are items we actually get to debate and vote on um usually items at committees like this are very um non-contentious and usually pass unanimously but that's never to say never um however we have one motion under new business today which is 10.1 approving funds for the alliance of bc students visit to the student union building this was submitted by Shauna, and I'll read the motion now. So the motion reads, be it resolved to approve up to $150 from the external and community affairs budget for food and beverages for the visit from the Alliance of BC students at the sub on June 18th, 2022. Is there a mover? History. Uh, I got a Shauna first. Uh, Matt, did you want a second? Sure. Fantastic. We have a mover and a second. I'll pass the floor off to Ashana as you submitted the motion if you want to give a bit of an explanation on this. Yeah, for sure. So the Alliance of BC Students are um, a really amazing group who do campaigns and they um, they lobby the government for a lot of institutions. So for example, like uh, they they would also fight for um, they, they would also lobby the government for more mental health resources. It's different, different things. Um, so kind of we're, we're building relationships up with them this year, kind of seeing what projects we can work on. Something that I brought up as well to them is the, thank you for putting the link in the chat, Ria. Um, something that we're trying to work on together right now is eliminating that international food health fee. So the, right, so kind of bring this back in, we're kind of seeing what campaigns we can work on together. Um, and for like, for when they're coming, we're going to do a tour. Um, we're going to have some like coffee and snacks, and then we're going to be in one of the boardrooms and we're going to talk about how we can campaign together, how we can lobby, basically building up numbers, building up student power, um, and then seeing how we can get council and committee members all into this and basically building up relationships. Um, any questions on that? Yes. How yeah. many people are we expecting? Um, it is about from executive side because i wanted to meet executives um it's four of us and then two from the alliance of bc students their president and their chairperson so six people so it's plenty of money for six yeah. people oh yes we, we definitely <laughs> overestimated yeah and yeah. It's a, it, i'll point out the wording of the motion it's up to 150 yeah. so i yeah. fully don't expect you to spend $150 because I know you're more <laughs> frugal than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to put it out there, I'm expecting it to be around $50 to $60. Oh. Yeah, I'm just really overestimating in case other executives try tend to join after because sometimes we don't check. Sometimes other executive members, we, we may not check our emails um, until the day of. Yeah, um, are we, I just wanted to make sure, are we ask, asking access needs and stuff for that, if there's any uh, of the folks that come here? Like, we want to be good hosts, right? Yeah. So, yeah. No, of course. Okay, so I have actually talked to, well, Ariana has, one of the chairperson of the Alliance of BC Students has actually come here before. But honestly, I have not asked the president, so I will ask that now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nebula. I, I really appreciate that. Be a good host. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? I heard a hmm coming over from you, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I got a little bit. Of okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm seeing no questions. So if we're okay to move to a vote, I'm going to do so. So at this time, I will ask all those in favor to please raise your hand.
Okay, so that's carried unanimously. Thanks everyone for your vote. That uh, is our one and only motion for the meeting and the rest are discussion items. So discussion items are just more informal um, uh, uh, topics of discussion that don't require uh, a vote at the end of it. No motion is attached to these items. It's just purely discussion amongst committee members. We'll start with 11.1 .1, and the discussion item is on upcoming projects in the external annual plan. And I will pass it off to Ishana. Yeah, I'm just going to make this one super quick because the rest of them just flesh it out. Um, but what's coming up are municipal elections, um, the anti-TMX day of action, a water drive plus donation drive. We're kind of just looking at a water drive right now. I, that's why I put donation drive to discuss what we can add to that. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. We can move on to the Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so that concludes 11.1. <laughs> we'll start with 11.2 on the discussion of municipal elections, get up to vote campaign um, as part of Ishana's annual plan. I'll pass that off to you. Perfect. Thank you, Gabe. Yeah, so we started super, super initial planning on this. I had one meeting with staff. Um, we're kind of just seeing logistical things. First of all, during municipal elections, we work with the university. Um, we're working with the university to see, first of all, if we can get a polling station on campus. So we would reach out to the elections officer for Burnaby, kind of seeing what's happening here. Um, so first of all, reaching out, seeing if we can get a polling station. Another thing we want to look at are having debates on our campuses. So we would work on this with other student unions locally, um, seeing if we can make it more of a collaborative collaborative project. Um, also, we do a get up to vote campaign. So that's kind of creating a package for our membership to be like, what are municipal elections? Um, to, are you eligible, first of all? Um, how for basically just making voting super simple and accessible um, using simple language. Um, and we do tabling during the get out to vote campaign. So we would be out in the sub or, or maybe in convocation mall and just talking about elections, seeing if students have questions, making it super easy. Um, and of course, as committee members, please tell me if there's anything else you want to add, any way you think we can make this campaign better. Um, yeah, open for discussion. Um, I think the message we want to get across is voting is cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think just uh, a lot of people think it's uh, doesn't make a difference or it's boring, um, but to make it really engaging. There are lots of young city councillors that, mm -hmm. um, you know, folks uh, are actually talking about things that people um, affect people's lives. So yeah, I saw a hand from you. Yeah, um, something I'm sure we can discuss is what can a municipal election actually do? Mm -hmm. So pointing out like, uh transit services uh road maintenance uh municipal infrastructure stuff like that stuff that would actually impact students where they live if we can really point to that while we're doing the get up to vote campaign and maybe have like little briefs on like what each can what each candidate kind of like pushing for mm -hmm. would be probably super helpful and make voting that much more accessible Absolutely. yeah what I find fascinating about elections is that people usually only pay attention to federal and provincial elections, mm -hmm. and they don't understand how consequential municipal decisions actually are, because they are decisions that impact you closest to home. I mean, you're talking about property taxes, mm -hmm. city services, um, even advocacy is a big component of municipal governments, because rather... Um, Municipal governments do have a restricted jurisdiction over certain issues, but they have a big role in actually advocating to other levels of government on issues like housing, um, transportation, transportation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think emphasizing that is a big deal. And also, um, one thing one stigma i think uh people have out there is that young people don't vote mm -hmm. um especially in municipal elections therefore candidates don't actually pay attention to students very much and i would actually argue and this may be contentious but i actually kind of think that's true mm -hmm. that students don't vote in municipal elections um and so i think our goal is to round up all the youth and push him to the voting station. <laughs> um, I see Rhea and then Matt. 
Yeah, um, I think also municipal elections, because there's like so many different candidates, um, it can be kind of overwhelming for people um, just to go through like the whole candidate list and stuff. And then because usually for like federal and provincial, it's like, oh, like these like different, it's usually like parties running and then there's like picking from like four and like maybe like few independent people, but then like um, for municipal, there's like a lot of people. Um, so like trying to find a way how to make that more digestible and like simple for students as well. Um, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Matt? Um, building off that, making it more digestible, um, maybe making like little social media posts as well. Mm -hmm. So like posting on stories, maybe like, what I said earlier about having those little card, like little digestible formats for what each candidate stands for mm -hmm. and making a bunch of posts about that could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And making it fun and funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, definitely. Like uh, municipal politics are kind of hilarious. Like there's some really <laughs> there's yeah. big drama going on, like at oh, all levels goodness. of politics, but like the hyper local stuff, it really does. Like people will be like, oh, that happened a few blocks away from me, right? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everybody has some stories. <laughs> yeah. But uh, building off what Rayo was saying too, is that like, um, yeah, uh, there are less requirements for some municipal candidates. So there's always some very, very eccentric people that like run for mayor. <laughs> and that's also like entertaining, like, you know, without um, being exploitative or being jerks about it, we can also be like, hey, you could also like, these are all the diverse people you could, you know, hear speak and maybe even vote for if you're into that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. um, jumping in here, like looking at more of like the logistical side of things. Mm -hmm. um, during our first meeting, uh, we kind of talked about a timeline. Mm -hmm. So June, right now, conversation starter. What is happening? Um, within that, I'm also talking to Joanne Curry at the SFU side. Nice. We're currently, Gabe and I are actually meeting Joanne, I think it's tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're meeting tomorrow. We're, we're actually going to talk about the public funding review, but we're going to bring up this and like getting a polling station. So that's kind of just updating you folks on what's happening there. July, reaching out to the university even more. So getting solidified plans for elections, um, polling stations again. And in July, we're going to plan for communications of, of the campaign. So that's kind of where like the labor notes conference kind of comes in as well because i feel like i learned a lot of like what kind of works mm -hmm. and like how to reach out to the media as well so I'll, of course i'll be sharing that with you folks um within when i explained that workshop that i went to um so i'm really really happy that i went to that workshop um so but some things that we're thinking about a campaign or posters um a blurb with the local radio here at, at um, the sfss so this cjsf um social media posts as you're seeing um and oh as every yeah as <laughs> sorry um, and then we're even <laughs> And then we're even thinking of like a web page for elections. So like that's something I think Matt brought up, like having those individual candidates, um, which will which is something that I'll definitely help on from the committee in terms of doing research on candidates, um, because there will be a lot. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at Vancouver, Burnaby, and Surrey, because that's where I'm a lot Maple Ridge too, where a lot of our membership is from. Um, and a lot of candidate announcements will come out at different times. Yeah, which, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to have to be looking out for those. So then um, we can delegate that once we get to know more of who is actually running. Um, so also in July, um, we're so I'm going to reach out to other campuses like Vancouver and Surrey, see what we can work on, like booking spaces for example, debates, um, starting the information package as well. So a lot is going to be happening in July and a lot will be de delegated to the committee as well. In August, we're going to actually start the campaign. So in July, we're just kind of planning for it. August, we're going to launch it. So this will just be simple things, social media, posters around campus, posters in the, in the sub. Um, September, we're kind of going to kind of really, really get into it. We're going to start tabling. So so, it, so the first day of classes is September 6th. We're, we're going to totally skip that because people don't really stay long. It's just like kind of intro things. So we're going to start tabling on the week of September 19th and the, or the 26th. Um, and we're thinking of getting help from uh, not maybe not even committee members, but go reaching out to council as well. So I'll put in a motion or if someone else wants to speak on it, uh, like a counselor in this committee go for it. Like you can explain what we're doing, um, take lead on it, uh, whatever you folks want to do. Um, and then October, maybe having on campus debates from conversations that I've had with city councillors. We haven't really brought up having city councillors on the debate 
uh, stand right now because we have to wait for who's running. So we're going to figure that out. Um, October is also voting. So really just pushing. So we're going to get a lot of work orders going for comms, um, a lot of tabling. So having that time. Yeah. Um, and I see someone has joined us. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm so sorry I'm late. I just had conflict of uh, schedules and couldn't be here earlier, but my name's Alexandra and thank you so much for um, having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. No worries at all. If you're following along on the agenda, we're just on 11.2, which is municipal elections. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, did anyone else want to hop in with any thoughts or questions? I don't know if you were done. Were you done? Yeah, okay, I, mean, cool. I feel like I, well, hello, Alexandra, I'm Ishana. Um, so we're kind of just talking about municipal elections. It's one of the biggest projects that we have to do this year. Um, something that we do is we have a get out to vote campaign. Um, so we're kind of just talking about that and I'm kind of like getting a, a rough timeline and then talking about how the committee gets um, uh, more involved in this process, but I can also update you after the, the meeting as well. Perfect. I'll stick around after. Thank you so much. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, I, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So we're we thinking there'd be um, one larger group to just plan the whole campaign in general and then smaller committees for each debate at each school and kind of like Surrey, Vancouver and Burnaby um, teams. Yeah. Do you want to it, touch on that? Yeah, it's the debates are going to be a beast of a project yeah. because <laughs> I, I think the goal, from what I understand, is that we have at least three separate debates. One SFU Burnaby that's centered around the Burnaby municipal candidates, and then one in Surrey um, centered around you know the Surrey candidates, and one in Vancouver centered around the Vancouver candidates. Um, so, for example, for the Vancouver debate, we would want to folk or want to work with um, universities in Vancouver. So like UBC, uh, uh, Langara, Emily Carr. I'm sure there's a bunch more that I'm missing, <laughs> yeah. but we'd want to work with their student unions to see if they would like to, to work with us as well. So that may very well end up being like kind of a joint working group amongst multiple different student unions. Um, in Surrey, I don't actually know if there are any po other post-sec institutions in Surrey okay. besides SFU. Quantland. Yeah. Is that, I thought that was in Langley. No, There's it is. Surrey it, okay. Okay. Langley, but it's like, uh, it's yeah. Okay. Um, Did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to add it. Maybe we could also get the uh, Surrey and Vancouver committees to help out with those as well. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I think that might have already been said. I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's something we could think about doing as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. We also put in the chat Douglas, so oh, yes. 100%. Oh, yeah, Douglas. That's right. <laughs> New West and... That's just, they have only two, right? I thought they only have the two campuses. Yeah. Rhea, do you know which... Uh, do they have a third location in Surrey? Yeah, I think they have one near the Surrey campus. Wait, let me see. They're close enough to Surrey, <laughs> like New Westminster is close like, enough to Surrey where I feel like we could include them in the Surrey debates. <laughs> yeah. And probably most of like the uh, Douglas Student Union's membership comes from Surrey as well, yeah. just because New Westminster is like this tiny little municipality right next to the big municipality of Surrey. Yeah. 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 So like Coquitlam and New West. Thank you, Shimmer. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer your, your question, in some. <laughs> um, I, I anticipate that there will be kind of smaller working groups under the general umbrella of the SFSS um, working on each debate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also in terms of like training, uh, not training, in terms of packages, like information packages and stuff, I can definitely take the lead on that. But in terms of like specific candidates and stuff, I will be delegating that. Um, and then obviously, if people want to work more closely on that, just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to give more things <laughs> to work on. <laughs> um, yeah, perfect. Also, Rhea just said in the chat, they have a training center in Surrey just checked. Thank okay. you, Rhea. Oh, great. Perfect. That's fantastic. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this? Any questions? One other thing that I'll mention quick, and I don't know if I've actually verbally said this thought out loud, I think maybe to you, but maybe not to the committee, <laughs> is that for the Get Out to Vote campaign, especially the social media campaign, I think a really cool initiative that we can do is 
Ishana, you have already been engaging with politicians and building relationships with, with them. Mm -hmm. Something I think we can do with um, politicians that are not at the municipal level, so like the provincial MLAs and uh, federal MPs, is ask them if they would be interested in doing videos that we can share on our social media on why they think it's important to vote in a municipal election because while they are politicians they're not th themselves running so it kind of takes that how do i explain this they're not running themselves so it's not kind of like a conflict of interest type thing where it would give them as the candidate more kind of airtime um Plus, I think like if it could be like a joint video, say like if Ishana and Katrina Chen were standing beside each other and they're both explaining in one video why it's important <laughs> to vote. Yeah. I think not only does that kind of boost our profile as the SFSS, like, look, this is us, the SFSS trying to get the youth out there to vote. And here's this politician who's helping boost that message. I think that's that would be a cool initiative. Yeah. So there's like a bunch of people we could do that with. There's Katrina Chen, there's Anne Kang, who is the Burnaby MLA, but she's also the Minister of Advanced Education. Yeah. Um, so that's a really, I think, a good idea. There's the Surrey MLA, Bruce Ralston. Yeah. Um, I have no idea who the MLA is or where the Vancouver campus is. I wanna, okay. oh, yeah. Thank you. yeah, I wanna say it might be Melanie Mark. But I'm not. I feel like Vancouver's split into so many different ridings that yeah. it could actually be multiple because Vancouver's cam uh, campus is quite spread out. It's a really good question. Yeah. I bet you Joanne would know. We should ask Joanne. We'll tomorrow. ask Joanne tomorrow. Action item. Yeah. <laughs> Action item. Anyway, that's something I wanted to point out. Um, circling back to debates, real quick, I do just want to mention that in terms of working with other student unions on this, we need to start reaching out to them like ASAP because mm -hmm. like I said, it's going to be a beast of a project to organize three separate debates with God knows how many different student unions. So we need to like organize those working groups ASAP, mm -hmm. um, have leads for each of those debates. Um, pardon me? I'm pretty sure it's Melanie Mark. Yeah. I'm looking at the map right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Melanie's amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you like that. Oh yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Melanie Mark, for those who don't know, um, she used to be the Minister of Advanced Education. Uh, after the SNAP election in 2020, uh, she became the Minister of Tourism, Arts, Culture, and Sport. Um, she is a badass. Like, um, her roots are in activism. Um, she She's definitely, like, one of the on-the-ground MLAs, not... Um, MLAs. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> And she's also the first ever Indigenous woman to be elected to the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia. So that alone, I'm just like, you're, you're amazing. But yeah, she was a former youth in Canada. Her mother lived on the streets and she survived everything you can imagine a person surviving. Yeah. I'm going to brag here a little bit, but I got to meet her on the weekend. <laughs> so that's why I'm like talking. Oh, that's why I'm talking about her so much. But I'll send you the pictures after. Yeah, <laughs> They're on my social media too. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah though uh and yeah yes okay yeah some cool. some ideas some ideas there um i'll point out that i think that idea is amazing um for <laughs> sure also like it's i i feel like it shouldn't only be me like doing those videos like committee members please show up <laughs> like if we have a meeting i'll just put an open invite and then committee members like if we're meeting up at the sub or if we're like at a coffee shop or something, um, I'll just put an open invite and then we can have different committee members with different um, candidates and then push that out on our SFSS social medias. Um, yeah, perfect. I think that is amazing. Any other thoughts on this? Also, this is like not the end of the discussion. This will be going on, I feel like at every single committee meeting forward um so this is just like initial ideas if you have anything feel free to also email me um about ideas and like even if you want come over to my office and then we can have one-on-one -on -one conversations about this and if you want to lead a certain working group we can have that happen for sure okay i think we'll close the discussion on municipal elections here we can move on to our next discussion item, which is 11.3, and that's anti-TMX Day of Action. And Sean, I'll pass the floor back to you. Yes. Okay. So an anti-TMX Day of Action. So I feel like, uh, so this was on my annual plan, kind of at the end. 
but we realized that maybe having one sooner would be greater because like we can see that it, the the tank farms are kind of being built um going up good lardy um and there's a lot of worry among students as well so kind of putting pressure and being like hey we need this needs to stop um and so kind of just planning what this day of action will look like, who will be there, how will we build this up as well? So do we, because something that I realized as well is Rhea and I, we were out, um, I think it was like the first week of summer, like the summer semester, and we were talking to students and giving out those free mini donuts. And, and we brought up um, the TMX pipeline and a lot of students didn't know about the like the effects or like what can happen because of this pipe because of the tank farms that are being built um so it's kind of like do we want to have some education tabling um how are we going to build up students power and then have this day of action where is this day of action going to be um any like so that i'll just leave that there i honestly have no clue what is what it's going to look like i i want to see what you folks want to do Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, Matt. Um, so you brought up some interesting ideas about uh, how students don't really know about this. Like yeah. this was brought to my attention in the last year. I knew that like having an oil pipeline go through SFU was like problematic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then after all, uh, let Rhea go. Um, actually, wait, is Rhea list before me? I don't know. Rhea, do you want to go first? And I'll hold on to my thought. Go ahead, Rhea. <laughs> oh, no, if you want to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> As um, chair now. <laughs> no, go ahead, Ria. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm not sure if you guys heard the announcement, but they just announced that like the TMX project as well has been it's like triple in cost than what was estimated and it's like no longer profitable. Um yeah, and then just like we've done um working because we did like the the SPSS, we were at the um hug the mountain um action as well um but oh yeah sorry what I was gonna say was yeah I really think like right now this summer there's a lot of organizing happening especially with um the Slay with Tooth um Sacred Trust so a bunch of um like it, it's led by youth mainly and also with um Slay with Tooth Nation we could do a lot of work um I think we really need to like come together and work collaboratively um also with SFU 350 they have a working group that's like um, solely focused on um, raising awareness and amplifying um, TM uh, like anti-TMX actions. Um, and also with Stop TMX, Protect the Planet, we also have like um, Faculty for Future, which is like, I think over a hundred faculty members at SFU who oppose TMX. Um, and also they supported like SFU 350 when um, SFU was like retaliating against um, the student organizers. So yeah, I think like working together with folks and like having like together also reaching out because I know um, we also work really closely with like the GSS and like TSSU and like contract workers justice. So like students, workers, faculty, um, and also working. Um, oh, there's also, I know me and Ishana, we went to a meeting today um, uh, with no cops on campus. And then also like we're, a bunch of folks were going to be organizing um, like a conference style thing in um, in the fall, right? Or yeah, and fall. yeah, in the fall, um, just like uh, anti TMX organizing and stuff, and then having a bunch of folks from like UBC and SFU work collaboratively. Um, so yeah, I guess like I know there's so many folks that are down to collaborate, so doing that would be great. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much, Ria. I, so what I'm getting from from here is like just a collaborative effort. Um, so if folks know other folks, like having this conversation in the future as well, um, we can delegate some people to reach out to different groups and then see how we can work collaboratively because obviously like not trying to reinvent the wheel, just supporting, amplifying, seeing what we can do and, and uh, and getting students to know what's happening. Um, awesome. I, Matt, did you want to go? Yeah, I was just going to essentially say, like, it's problem. It's a big issue that a lot of students don't know. We should really consider amplifying a lot on social media, mm -hmm. tabling. I think that's stuff you already mentioned, but I, yeah. Um, 
and like making those little like cards that you see on Instagram saying like essentially what are some of the bigger key issues yeah. and who can swipe long for like more detail. Amazing. Um, yes. Yeah, I just want to say like as folks are talking about it, it I got overwhelmed just hearing about so there's so many different groups, but it sounds like there's no cohesion and no like they're not all communicating with each other and they're all working on it together. So um, is that something that we want to take on as being like a hosting space for these groups to come together and talk about things? Yeah. yeah. Um, just to answer for myself, I feel like that, like 100%, we have like the space for it, we have capacity. Um, I also know that RIA has really great relations. Well, we, we work together with the GSS and TSSU and the contract workers um, justice. And uh, so I feel like creating those relationships because that, that was something that I really wanted to do like within my portfolio when I first ran as well. But I'm um, seeing these things actually happen and like Rhea and I working with these amazing groups of people, 100%, um, I feel like we can create those spaces of collaboration. Um, yeah, because yeah, as an org, our strengths are that we have space, yeah. right? And we also do have money. So yeah. those are ways that I think that we can contribute exactly. to the cause. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Rhea, did you list? Um, oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I really like that idea, though. Like yeah. using our space as a means to like bring everyone together under the umbrella of anti TMX. Yeah. That'd be really helpful. And when you're doing allyship work, you kind of got to go like, okay, like other people are doing this work better than I am. What do I actually have to bring to this work? Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. Uh, Rhea, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add on to um, like what Ishana and like Matt were saying that like so many students don't even know like that we have like a tank farm right there at like the only intersection that goes up to our school and goes down and like um, maybe just doing like building up to the day of action, like getting out there. Um, I know like we can see what classes are running right now, but doing like short like classroom talks and even just like um, tabling, um, like tabling uh, and then trying to get a sense of how many students, like, like keeping track of the students that we're reaching out to and like numbers and stuff and trying to like get as many people engaged and knowing like what's happening. Um, and like, that's really important too, like with the day of action, trying to get as many people out there and like mobilize, um, like mobilizing the student body, right? And then I know we also talked to Katrina Chen and she would be down to come out for like um, a day of action, right? She mentioned that. So um, we can also do that too. And like, of course, working, um, working with the other groups, maybe we can also um, have a meeting just for us to come together and like, talk about how we can collaborate and like work on this together. Um, I know we talked about wanting to move up the new day of action. So what would be an ideal day? Mm -hmm. We have to start thinking about that and then we can start thinking about how we can uh, mobilize with all those other groups to try and get them under your umbrella. If we do another day, like hug the mountain that draws in a lot of press and stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, maybe we should figure that out. What was the old day? So they literally just at like by the end of the term, like also, it was in like, April, it was yeah, in like, under April, April yeah. your annual plan. Was under April. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're moving it. What do, what do you folks think? July, August? Because, oh, okay, thinking about it realistically, we're already at the end of June. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if even July would work if we want to build up that tabling and, and community education. My thought would be do it. Uh, might come to our time with uh, elections and stuff like that, but doing it in the fall. They're walking around like, yeah, there are students on campus, but not nearly enough if you want to like actually get people to notice you. So maybe like taking space during clubs week, if that's in person, taking a table, it's not technically a club, but like, mm. um, and then also like in around like open day, because everyone's going to be like, yeah, people are going to be wanting to come up and down, but are also going to be like walking around like, walk around campus, figure out where stuff is. And at that point when they're like lost looking for their next class, because it's down the stairs on the left side of the right campus, I don't know. We'd be like, hey, have you heard about this? You know? I want to say that though, that students are so overwhelmed in those first few weeks. Um, uh, there is something to be said about like, there are students that are bored right now because maybe they're taking less classes in the summer. Um, there's students that are here um, uh, from you know, other countries who are yeah, just kind of like feeling like there's nothing to do on campus. So those are people that we could mobilize. 
um, yeah, yeah, July is, seems too soon, especially if there's so many other stakeholders and other groups. Um, August, there's exams. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think September is not ideal because there's so many things happening mm -hmm. in September. I will also say yeah. that September and October, our own resources and labor will be very yes. much you being used for the municipal elections. Yes. <laughs> so basically, I think we're looking after October 15th. So I mean, the end of August, maybe, like between the class, but then the people might not even be on campus. Like, yeah, you're saying like yeah. the end of exams, people aren't going to be wanting to come up to campus in the first place at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think because we also have to think about how bad the weather might be in the fall. We don't want put it to like no end of November where we're gonna need to bundle up just to show up, right? So I mean, we don't have to make this decision. I think what we can do is start those relationships and yeah. bring everybody together yeah. so that other people can carry this and make their decisions, right? Yeah, and if they right. choose a date, um, we can support whatever capacity we have yeah. as exactly yeah. any. Um, this was something that I also wanted to bring up. There is actually a, sorry, I had it here. All right, because I don't. Oh, yes, there is a town hall coming up. So town hall, uh, so it said the town hall is named Youth Say Don't Give Up. It is about, oh my goodness, um, I'll put the link, I'll send an email out with the link. So basically it's a town hall. Um, so it's just to like learn about um, indigenous consent, climate change, tar sands, orcas, salmon, gasoline, and the coast of the pipeline expansion on all of us. So kind of like learning about like what is like what is happening what can we do kind of just supporting and also just being in community which is something that i really want to like emphasize especially in this committee um so um i'll, I'll send out an email with details ria also just put um a link in the chat thank you <laughs> yeah so there is a rally and a town hall so um i'll also, like something I want to do more, I know that uh, Gabe brought this up, but I'll be putting this out in like Discord, maybe a group chat soon. I'll be doing emails though for like more important like things like this. Um, so just keep an eye out for things like this. So that's in relation to it, this topic. So I guess we can also learn what actions folks are planning at that town hall. Um, see what people want to do. I feel I feel like what we can focus on right now for sure is education. So like tabling, um, posters, social media. Um, and you know, I, I, yeah, I've been yeah, education I love that. student. Yeah, um, oh, I love that. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so uh, what immediately came to mind is like, do we, do we have the budget to print a giant map? Um, and, and, you know, give a bunch of posters of maps to folks so they can actually say, oh, that's where the tankers are, because you can see them when you're riding a bus mm -hmm. map, like in the winter when the trees are a bit more sparse. Um, but yeah, people don't know it's right there. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, a lot of people don't learn unless it's false, mm -hmm. right? So if we have things that are, we make little kits and maybe just send out like, I don't know, anywhere from three to six people into classrooms uh, and have these um, props be accessible that um, people could you know, pick them up somewhere, um, like have a locker or something where people can just pick up these big posters. And then maybe have like pictures of, I don't know, salmon, or um, if we wanted to do a TMX day of action, it'd be really effective. A lot of um, anti-pipeline uh, indigenous led events have, have food, especially salmon. Um, yeah. And we say, hey, like you're welcome to feast. And we're very grateful to uh, the land that was able to give us this, uh, this food and to create that connection. Of, um, yeah, of people and land and, and yeah. say this is what, these, these things are threatening um, this bounty, right, this beautiful place that we live in. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like even just adding on to that, it just creates such a great sense of community, um, which is why I, I really, really, um, I, 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 I love this conversation that we're having right now. I want to do a check-in uh, with folks, especially online folks. Does anyone, Alexandra, Rhea, Minahel, any lingering thoughts or things you want to share, questions? Hi, I can, I guess I can go first. Um, I was thinking about the um, DMX. I was thinking that uh, I agree that it's definitely a tough position right now because it's too early for July. There's no chances we could possibly pull it off and August it's going to be tough because of exams and then nobody will be on the campus and I know that you guys don't want to decide but I think that it would be it would give us a good time if we actually like 
we could potentially agree that the best time will be August 15 and just see how much we can actually, how much we can spread the information about it until then. And um, what else, what, what was I thinking? Sorry. That's okay. Um, somebody else can, can go because my thoughts just totally uh, totally fine. Yeah, so course. just to reiterate what you're saying, you're, I, I guess you're suggesting maybe it's good if we actually pin down a date. Oh, right, right, right. Because I was also thinking the elect election, right? There's so many people who never vote. So I think this will be very occupying to actually go get out there and, and tell people to go and vote, you know? So we will also. still be busy with that. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm thinking, so kind of using this education piece to be like, hey, we can change this if we go and vote during elections. Mm -hmm. so, to vote for people who are opposed to the pipeline. Um, and there are a lot of, count, well, I've, Councillor uh, Allison Gu is someone who is who is opposed to the pipeline and who has shown support and shown up to rallies. So even being like, these are people who do not support the pipeline. Um, and then kind of th that, thank you, Alexandra. Yeah, perfect. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I love this idea. I'm aligned with it personally. Yeah. However, we it's it, it's we can't the North can't. Yeah, exactly. So there's tricky territory. Yeah, so we have to make sure that whoever's speaking on behalf of SFSS is yeah. very very careful to say we as an SFSS oppose TMX. Oh yes, these are candidates that oppose TMX, but we're not saying you have to vote for them. Yeah. So thank you yeah. for clarifying that. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Go ahead, Alexandra. Um, that's exactly what I was thinking while you were talking about um you know, promoting election, promoting voting. I was thinking that, you know, there are individuals that I I wouldn't want to promote to be voted for, but it's such a thin uh, surface beyond to, you know, kind of talk about it. And I was going to ask you, like, how should we position ourselves in that situation that there are definitely people out there that I, I would not want to vote for, for obvious reasons. Um, so what do we do? We just like don't promote anybody or just make like very clear statements like these um, these candidates like uh, are for this and these candidates are for this without opinion or, you know, go ahead. I used to work for the BC Health Coalition, which also is very, um, yeah, it's supposed to be nonpartisan, um, but they had a checklist of like here are some main issues that we are concerned about as an organization and this is the candidates and how they stand on those positions. Okay, so in terms of, um, yeah, like we, we can talk about because people are probably concerned about uh, access to abortion, right? Maybe some candidates mention it in their platform and say, oh, this person has said this, right? Um, and say, oh, this person has said something about TMX or oh, they didn't say anything at all. So, you know, <laughs> Who yeah. knows what they think, right? Mm -hmm. You can even ask them at the town hall debates, right? Mm -hmm. And say, these are issues that students are concerned about. What do you, how do you stand on these issues? That's so fine. just, yeah, making like a large kind of infographic with like a checklist where it's like, this candidate says this, check or next, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Great, Ishana. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, and of course, thank you for pointing out that we do not endorse specific candidates as SFSS. We're just trying to get information out and making sure that we don't have, we don't try and influence our membership into voting a certain way. It's how they want to vote. Um, so thank you very much. And also that the resource that you're talking about sounds amazing. And also just helping students um, see who stands for what. And, and it's kind of like taking away of like, oh, having to do so much of your own research as well. And it just makes it very accessible, which is like what we want to do. And, and as we said, make things simple for, for the membership. Um, I just had an idea yeah. actually about the Get Out to Vote campaign. Yeah. Um, if we have a, a booth, we probably will have a booth a yeah. couple times. Um, we should have a giant map on a cork board and people can pin where they live. Mm. So that, yeah, and then we have the um, electoral districts outlined. And say, okay, so this is these are the candidates for your area. And we can have like different stacks of pamphlets for people in different neighborhoods. Yeah. I've tabled a lot. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> that's awesome. Tabling is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Amazing. Any other thoughts for folks? Oh, and Rhea has a Rhea? Yeah, I just put in the chat um, the link to the Instagram post as well as the um, registration for the town hall. Um, so yeah, it's just like, um, it's featuring Cedar George Parker, who's from the Slave Tooth Nation. Um, 
And yeah, there's going to be a bunch of different speakers and like learning about indigenous consent, climate change, tar sands, orca, salmon, gasoline, and like the impact of it. Um, yeah, if folks can make it out, it would be uh, like, yeah, super important things talking about here. Um, and then um, also, yeah, I'm also part of the organizing group that is at SFU, who's organizing against um, um, against the pipeline and like working with UBC and stuff. If folks are interested in that too, like let me know, I can connect you and put you on an email list as well. We do like um, organizing meetings. Um, and yeah, just like a really great space for folks to come together. And then we also, we I wasn't able to make it, but then on Saturday we had like a rest and like celebration, sort of like barbecue at um, Jericho Beach, but yeah, just like a really great organizing space too. And I'm sure, I think, yeah, like reaching out to folks and then like finding a way to work together. Um, and yeah, like combine our capacities as well would be really amazing. Yeah, I feel like also just talking about like re and like the work that we do, um, having those spaces of like rest and joy and being able to like come together and also like celebrate our wins because we have, we like get some really, really great wins, especially in like all of this work that we do. Um, so being able to take care of, care of ourselves in that way. But um, yeah, any other thoughts before we move on to the next discussion? Either? Cool. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to kick it off on Water Drive plus Donation Drive? Yes. Okay. So Water Drive and Donation Drive. So we are currently experiencing a heat wave right now. Um, we saw the impacts of the heat waves um, last year as well. I also have some resources I can send out to you folks. Um, so right now, initiatives that we're trying to do for this summer for when heat waves are expected to come. Um, having water, doing a water drive, reaching out to other organizations, companies, people to donate water to uh, people by the Surrey Central area and the downtown east side. So how that'll kind of work is that we're gonna get a bunch of water, um, we're gonna talk to council about it, get volunteers from this committee, from council, um, and head out whenever the heat gets really bad. Um, obviously within our own capacities because the heat affects everyone, right? So if you're willing and have the capacity, um, and of course thinking about accessibility needs, um, that's something that one of the initiatives that I want to take on for the summer. Um, any thoughts on how we can move forward with this? Um, yeah. Matt, go ahead. Um, I think this will also be a really great opportunity to work with municipalities. They love good press. Mm -hmm. And like especially like uh, within Surrey and Vancouver, they'd love to have the opportunity to get a little bit of uh, positive press going their way one out. Um, so making contact with them could be beneficial. And then there are some other companies that try to target themselves as being very ethical. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> So reaching out, making effort to reach out to them could also be beneficial. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, talking about Surrey, I did a lot of work um, like 135 A Street, which is like really near the Surrey campus um, with like houseless folks there for like eight years. Um, and now like there's a lot of, like basically before it was like a tent strip for a while. Um, and then it's moved into like modular housing, but um, we we can work with also reaching out to I think it's like keys there's a shelter there a shelter and a kitchen um and then also there's night shift there as well um but especially for community members um living there as well um we can like reach out to the organizations who are there like and also folks there on the ground and like what we need as well um or what they need and like how we um how we can like, so we're not just going in there and like handing things out, but like what's best um, and like go from there as well. If, yeah, I can look into that too. Alexandra? Um, I was thinking the same thing, but about downtown East Side. It's um, it just, I think it would be good to definitely find places. There are places there that, you know, people that have a need, they will line up and go and ask for what they need. So maybe just talk to these places and people who run these places, because I think it would be a bit um, difficult to just, you know, go there and 
um, hand out water on our own. I think it just mm -hmm. might not possibly be like always safe. And you know what I mean? It just, I think it would be better to have it organized through places that are already doing it in a way and just help. Yeah. Absolutely. And something we were discussing this with staff this morning is that I suggested we should actually reach out to Minister Mark's office because I know her office does a lot of work on the downtown east side as well, but also a number of other community groups. Yeah, did you want to go ahead? Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, what is the scale to which we're trying to, you know, like, uh, and is it going to be also three different regions, right? Because, yeah, Surrey is... Uh, um, the Surrey outreach is going to be very different than the Vancouver and the Burnaby mm -hmm. as well. And like here, physically, our space is located very far away from where a lot of community members live. So where would the Burnaby actions or action, yeah, action or actions take place? And yeah, how many people, how much, how much water are we giving away? Are there other things we're giving, like uh, bandanas or something, right? Or was that something that was suggested? Yeah, I think we were yeah. talking about bandanas and stuff. I think right now we're also just thinking about our funding. Yeah. Um, because for the ECA committee ourselves, yeah. we probably can't get it out of our own fund. We have to go to council because our own fund will be used for um, okay. other external trips within like the committee. Okay. Um, so right now it's kind of looking at, first of all, what can we provide? Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, as Rhea and Alexander said, talking to, to those community members, which um, if you folks would like to do that, let me know, send me an email mm -hmm. for who is like reaching out to who, and then just report back and then we can build from there. In terms of like, like um, so you asked about quantity and things like that, um, I guess, We'll, we'll figure that out once we talk to those organizations as well. And also for myself, I've only been thinking specifically about like Surrey Central and like the downtown east side. For Burnaby itself, um, let's, we can totally add that in. What, where do you folks think we can I, do I that? I don't know Burnaby very yeah. well. <laughs> I hang out in Vancouver all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone in the uh, Zoom room have any ideas? Um, yeah, I have a friend that works at Carnegie Library, but also, yeah, I see there's a list. Rhea, yeah, go ahead. Maybe in Burnaby, like around Skytrain stations and stuff. Um, maybe that would be, I'm, I also don't know Burnaby too well, but we can also see like shelters in Burnaby um, and like reach out to them and um, get a better idea of that too. Like where would be the best idea and I know there's also a bunch of cooling centers that they're going to open up in Burnaby um, that me and Yushan also went to a town hall for. So, um, yeah, I think maybe getting a better idea of, like, what, what is needed and, like, what location. Sounds good. Thanks, Rhea. What a great conversation. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I think that was very, very productive. Okay, cool. So we have some action items. Um, if we can maybe delegate a bit right now since we're talking about uh, like having this re not ready pretty soon but um Rhea, would you be able to reach out to um the shelter you or the organization you talked about in Surrey okay perfect Rhea reaching out in Surrey and then Alexandra you talked about um the downtown east side do you have any connections there or do you know anyone you could reach out to um, I have no connections. Do you know? Do you, any of you know anybody else? Yeah, so I have a friend that works at Carnegie Library. Okay, uh, which is right at Maine and Hastings. Um, mm -hmm. I also have a friend that works at Pace, which uh, services um, sex workers on the downtown east side. Yeah. Um, I volunteer for Everything for Wish, which is also a sex worker organization. Uh, the thing is, a lot of these orgs probably already have plans in place for um, the heat wave. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I need to ask, because also they're, they're so swamped with everything else that they provide, like so many frontline services. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the, the MAP van, which was a traveling van that helped um, street affiliated sex workers is not in service right now, because that would be a perfect place to give lots of uh, more free swag. But um, uh, yeah, I think Melanie Mark would be a great person to reach out to. I've met her a few times, um, but if you want to further that sure. relationship, absolutely. Well, what I can do is I can reach out to I can reach out to Minister Mark, and um, that can include me, Shauna, and you. Because yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happen. Well, Gabe, yeah. <laughs> Gabe, Shauna. Yeah. yeah, like that's that's the whole thing with this committee too. Is like if we have meetings or outreach to politicians, it can include any of us. So it's good. Yeah, amazing. 
I think we got a oh, solid Jim Swanson as well. Yes. yes. Um, Ishana, do you want to take that off? Yeah. So I actually had a meeting with um, Councillor Swanson, and it was such an amazing meeting. Um, we really talked about like building that working relationship and community. So I'll definite, I'll definitely reach out about. You know, I actually brought this up with Councillor Swanson as well, and they, they were, they were into it. They, uh, but they also talked about as we all talked about like talking to organizations and like seeing what also what the city is doing. Um, I know that I also talked to the mayor of Surrey and I talked about, oh, like having water dries and things like that. And they said that they're also working on some initiatives. So as long as we can like support, amplify, see what we can bring in as well, um, let's do it. Um, amazing. Yeah, like if there's days uh, that, you know, uh, municipalities are already doing things, we can say we can volunteer like five people to show up and yeah. we all do this much money so you can get that much more supplies. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, should we reach out to specific municipalities like Vancouver and Surrey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because Mayor McCallum did say, like, he's willing to provide us all that information. We just need to reach out to yeah. what's her face, what's her name? I, <laughs> I <don't laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, community centers are also a great help. Yes. Ooh, yes, especially because a lot of community centers are housing cool centers. Mm -hmm. And would no doubt appreciate the extra assistance. Yeah. yeah. So, City of Burnaby, then we should also reach out to the. Yeah. Um, a little update on the City of Burnaby. I met with the mayor of Burnaby and we talked um, about cooling centers mostly. So, they said that they're good on cooling centers. The one thing that we did talk about was maybe just supporting and amplifying on our social medias. Um, in terms of water drive, I can just bring that up. Um, I'll, I'll just make another meeting happen. Water drive. Perfect. Do we need to like uh, hammer down an amount of money that we want to ask the council for? Um, I don't know if we have all the information yet to do that. Like we, in order to bring something to council, we need to put together like an actual proposal document, okay. breaking yeah. down the numbers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I looked at the forecast. Obviously, weather is subject to change. It's we love it, but um, for the next while, it seems as though things should be okay. okay. Fingers crossed, obviously. But um, assuming that you know weather pattern maintained, um, we should be at least good for the next two weeks. Mm. Yeah, there okay. shouldn't be anything pressing. It will get a little bit hot later this week, I think, but nothing like what we have right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean. The agenda item deadline for council. So the council meeting is next Wednesday. So not this week, but next Wednesday. And the agenda item, the deadline to submit items for the agenda is this Wednesday. So I mean that is enough time, I think, to put together a rough idea of how much money we would need, need to request from council and get that on the agenda for next week. Yeah. Someone would just need to invest some time in putting that together. What's your calendar look like for tomorrow? <laughs> like, I'm booked up tomorrow. We know we yeah. talked about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's really it's it, I have meetings all day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's your Wednesday morning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a rally at 7 a.m. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> hmm. Yeah, I can help write emails and stuff tonight. I can maybe just like make a, a Excel sheet, just spreadsheet that people can then put stuff into as we get replies for stuff. Okay. And, um, yeah, tomorrow I'm volunteering doing stuff all day. Yeah. And I want to come to that thing on Sunday or Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's going to be a good yeah. value. <laughs> um, let me look at my calendar, but I think midday Wednesday I'm good. Oh. I am free. I'll put a block in for an hour. Okay, fantastic. I got this. <laughs> so just for that research, I'm just looking at prices, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Prices for uh, I mean, this could also be an opportunity to speak uh, speak with the VP of finance. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he wants a new project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Yeah, at least feel. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Or could this be considered under? I don't know. I was gonna say maybe like uh events could be interested but this isn't really an event on campus so they probably wouldn't be interested as much we can always talk to um, yeah. we can just talk to all execs see who's interested yeah. something i feel like a lot of people would uh want to get in on yeah cool last thoughts on water drive but okay
Um, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, Minahil, I'm so sorry. I just saw what you said in the chat. May I ask what organization you're talking about? Or we can click on the link. I'm so sorry. I did not oh, see Sorry, this. it's called the Night Owl Outreach. They're situated in Langley. They oh. they have like a similar concept, like the whole water drive thing. When you said as soon as you said the water drive, that's yeah. where my mind went. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. They, I do a lot of work around downtown, just trying to help people. Whoever they find, they help them out. So I just, I just thought that would be, you know, if you wanted to work with someone, I thought they'd be good people to work with. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this research. Um, I know at large members, this is your first kind of ECA committee meeting, but Minahil, if, if you want, would you like to reach out to them and then talk for about sure. our Amazing, I'll put you down for that. I can reach, I can reach out. And then if you have any questions on um, the project itself, let me know and we can like work on an email or let me know if once they reply. Do, do we have, um, do we have like a brochure or something about our project yet? No, this is actually like our first time talking about it as a committee. Do we have like a summary of it so that that might help as I'm reaching out to them? Yeah, um, and then uh, we can send out because uh, it's we're, we're cold calling, right? These are organizations we might not have a relationship with yet. Yeah, and we're just saying, hey, we have this idea, we have money, we maybe have some volunteers. Um, what are you doing, and do you need our help? Yeah. Okay, I, I can, I can, I can work for that. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Just three points right there in <laughs> the span of a minute. <laughs> cool. Okay, we all good? Yeah. yeah Sounds good. No, that's <laughs> totally fine. Um, <laughs> I feel like 11.5 is a bit null and void because we have been delegating and talking yeah. about all projects. So let's just skip 11.5 because there is really no discussion to be had there. Um, that concludes our discussion items portion of the agenda. So we can move on to announcements. And I know there are quite a few. Um, so first of all, I just want to announce that tomorrow there is a TransLink roundtable event happening in Maple Ridge being uh, uh, jointly hosted by the MLA for Maple Ridge Pit Meadows, Lisa Bear and TransLink, where they're going to be going over uh, ongoing initiatives with TransLink and upcoming initiatives as it relates to transit in that region in particular. So Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, Mission. It's my understanding that there are gonna be uh, one or two kind of major announcements coming out of that round table in terms of investments that TransLink is, or that rather the provincial government is making in transit and infrastructure projects. Myself, um, I work for the MLA for Maple Ridge Pit Meadows, so I will be there in that capacity. Um, Ishana will be there uh, in her capacity as VP external. Matt will be there as well, I think. Yes. Um, I don't know what capacity you're going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Um, so we will definitely bring information back in terms of kind of what gets shared at that round table. Um, and if anyone here is interested in driving or transiting all the way up to Maple Ridge for that event, you're more than welcome. I can share the information, um, but I know that's less than desirable. It's <laughs> um, uh, just beautiful, but very far. <laughs> yes. Uh, the next announcement is just a reminder that our next ECAC meeting will be two weeks in two weeks' time, Monday, July 11th, at the same time, 5 p.m., hybrid, in-person, or virtual. The choice is yours on how you want to attend. And one last thing that I'll mention is that just based on some of the responses I got from my email earlier today about group chats, I will probably go ahead and make a WhatsApp group chat. It seemed like that was the, about the majority of, of what people's preferences were. Um, so if everyone can do me a favor and I'll ask everyone in person to write down their phone number for me after the meeting. But um, for those who are online, can you please put your phone number in the chat? Um, yes, and I'll take a picture of it and create a WhatsApp group chat. 
amazing. Um, and I already have your phone number. I have your phone number. I just don't have yours. Do you want to just write it down anywhere on that? To, um, accept my Discord friend request, and I'll send it to you there. <laughs> oh, I never use Discord, so my apologies. Okay, I will make a big note. Accept. Friend. That's really funny. <laughs> I looked it up like a year and a half ago, and I was like, okay. Oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> Actually, I can't find you right now. So I feel so bad. Ooh, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> um, and I am aware that Shauna has a couple announcements that she wants to make. As well. Yeah, I feel like I already said one. Uh, the town hall happening um, on July 5th. I'll be sending out details for that. Um, well, I think we already put it in, in the chat. Um, I, Rhea, I think you also put the one for the rally, like the Facebook invite. So there, thank you, Ria, for just sending it. So basically all my announcements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ria, do you want to go ahead and talk about it a bit too? Yeah, so um, tomorrow at 12 at noon, there's going to be a rally in front of David Ebby's office in solidarity with um, wet sweat and land defenders who are being um, um, criminally charged for defending their land and just standing in solidarity with them um, in front of the office. And there's going to be like, I think like an uh, like a painting session too there. And it's like a family friendly event. Um, and just, yeah, just like uh, holding space there. Um, and then also for, there's going to be the town hall that I, pre that I also mentioned. That's going to be July 5th. I'm sending um, an invite to the um, the ECA uh, Gmail right now. So it should it should show up for everyone, I think. July 5th at 7 p.m. And there's like a Zoom. I put in the RSVP, but there's an option to join in either online or through um, or at the, uh, it's like Lockdale Hall. Um, so yeah, you can also go in person or online at 7 p.m. on July 5th. Thank you, Ria. Could you also CC my VP external email on that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Perfect. Oh, yes. Um, BD, go ahead. Uh, I might get kicked out. I don't know why. Uh, and I'm lost on where we are at. So, because I got kicked out twice, but I'll be fast just um you all doing amazing job and it's good to see the energy of this new eca committee uh compared to last year i just wanted to add that um these i i had linked it here but because i got kicked out maybe let me give it a try there's a link over there that i wanted us to be accountable to our membership so if you go to that link, you'll realize we have advocacy. We've, we've talked about this, Ishan and Ria, advocacy plans, achievements, and ongoing. So how this is developed is that we have the advocacy annual plan. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward to maybe next year time like this when we have a new ECA committee. If we don't do some things, what will happen is that all these projects that you have will be brushed off and then the new ECA committee will come with, uh, with their all new projects. So brings me to my first question is the ECA committee, have you gone through the past ECA committee one year and reconciled some of these advocacy topics that you have that might that you might want to carry on or might might have been achieved so if you do that then the next ECA committee will also do the same with the projects that we have so number two another point is that some of these advocacy topics that are in on the website they had input of membership I'm assuming those membership maybe they're in their fourth year third year so they might want us to be accountable um, so does that mean that we need to reconcile or merge some of the advocacy topics that we have and we all have great ideas and you're probably wondering why I'm, I'm a staffy and I'm not saying anything part of part of our role in these committees is to ensure there's a transition and to also advocate for the past 
uh, advocacy topics that the other committees had left, right? So we need, I just wanted to put that polite reminder that we try and also um, uh, try and look some topics that the other ECA committee had and revive them. If they've been achieved, then we'll update the website that it has been achieved. And then the next year we'll continue with the cycle of that process. Uh, another point is on the lobbying that Ishan has been doing. I think it will be also useful for us to have briefs on the outcomes of this lobbying. So yes, we did a pre meeting, we, we suggested the topics, but what did you discuss? What was promised? One, it will help the next ECA committee not to repeat themselves and they're going to do this lobbying. Two, it will be part of the achievements of the report that you'll be writing for the AGM and also that is important for this lobbying website. So those were my thoughts. I missed the other meeting, so I just thought I should, I, I was thinking I should just tell the ECA committee on the logistic and the documentation and the record keeping that comes with the advocacy of SFSS. Yeah, thank you so much, Petey. I know that's something that um, when I was like transitioning into this role as well, just for transparency so people know, um, I, when I was making my annual plan, I made the whole thing with the previous VP external as well. Um, and like even just going through like B, I'm thinking that even for the next ECA committee, maybe we can go through the advocacy um, and like lobbying that the last ECA committee did, seeing how we can strengthen that, further do things, seeing what new happens. Um, also something that we do is we send out uh, a survey to membership and like see what they want us to advocate for. So that'll be coming out later once we kind of uh, figure out the logistics of that. Um, but thank you for the reminder, B. Like, on, like that literally, like at the end of the day, this is what we're here for to advocate for what students want. Um, so that's super solid. So what I'm thinking right now for action items for the next ECA committee, look at what the last ECA committee did, how we can strengthen it. Um, and then I'll also bring up those because I'm making that presentation to council for like what I talked about to politicians. Um, also, I'll make a document like a full formal one with what we talked about pre meetings with politicians and the results of what those what happened at those meetings. And then I'll report back to you folks and then we'll, we can go from there, especially for the next VP external and next EC committee. Um, how does that sound, BD? Sounds good. Um... I think I'd, I'd share a tracker with you that mm -hmm. can guide you in terms of explaining what was discussed and the outcome of the discussions. Um, so I can I can share that with you. I think it, if it will make your work easier, but if you have other options, you feel free to just use what you have. Just responding like re direct response, star, star. Um, I'll, I'll use the tracker. <laughs> okay, no worries. Yeah. Uh, so just looking through this, a lot of things are things that are still ongoing, like yeah. the DMX stuff and uh, Gondola Project mm -hmm. and International Student Affordability. Mm -hmm. um, lots of these things are things I've oh. heard in the past few weeks and months. Perfect. Um, there are some things that uh, maybe have uh, fizzled out a little bit, um, but it wouldn't. It won't take much time to update this. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, there, there hopefully is a place to archive the mm -hmm. previous one, so that we're also being transparent with our membership. Perfect. Yeah. Who, uh, who um, like maintains this website, the SFSS website? Um, our communications department. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah, this is something we could do by next meeting, right? I'll, I'll just take oh, a yeah. quick look at it and just be like, oh, yeah, that's still relevant. Yeah. That's not relevant. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, I think we can uh, move on then to uh, an official motion to adjourn the meeting. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll read the motion now, which reads, be resolved to adjourn the meeting at 6.39 p.m. Did anyone, uh, do I have a mover for the motion? Anita moves, is there a second? Oh, Is Shauna seconds? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we'll put this motion to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Cool. All right, the motion is carried unanimously. Is it not? No, it doesn't okay. matter. And the motion is, uh, and the meeting is officially adjourned. 
Um, before everyone goes, I want to 